You know what this means. Big night last night. Um, obviously, lots of people got popped by all of the news after Locke with Draymond and Gallo and Cunningham. So being able to avoid those sort of landmines was pretty clutch. Um, obviously, I, for those that you were in the live stream, I was trying to get myself on to Draymond at one point, which wouldn't have been really awesome. But ultimately, I avoided all of it, and uh, things went really well, and I'm back in the mansion. And since we started this little uh, bankroll tracking exercise, I am in the positive. So let's go check it out. So lineup that I ended up finishing with was Rondo and Rogier, Gordon and Lamb, uh, Paul George and Durant, Miritich and Portis, and Cousins. I put up 305.9, um, which was good enough to, uh, you know, cash across the board. Finished 99th out of 568 in this particular double up, but I hit basically everything. Uh, put $50 in, uh, we had $64 of true profit, um, 128% ROI, so really, really, really good. Just lost a couple head-to-heads, and uh, one of the quintuple ups, oddly enough, I finished out of the money in, um, which is kind of a bummer, but, you know, what are you going to do? So right now, for the whole exercise, we are up $9.70. ROI 2.9% to the good. Um, so let's dig into the breakdown now. Um, like I said, I have Rondo and Rogier. Rondo at 56%, Rogier at 71%. Um, not too much crazy to look at here. Uh, both of those guys were obviously highly, highly owned um, and were going to be from the jump. But I'm actually surprised that Rondo was at 56, but I guess that AD news totally pushed him up a little bit further and got everybody back onto the Pels. Um, Westbrook ended up being like 20% owned in some of the double ups I saw. He put up 4.7x. And then if you had Lillard or Chris Paul, you were probably pretty happy. Um, they both went to for, you know just over 5.5x. Paul was the third point guard of the night for me. Um, if I didn't end up with, well, originally it was uh, Paul and Rondo, and then the Celtics news came out, so then I, I was probably going to go Rogier and CP3, and then during the build I ended up on Rondo for savings elsewhere to be able to fit in Paul George. Not that I'm complaining. Uh, rough night for Kemba, really rough night for Lowry, uh, Dunn back down to earth, uh, you know, Dragic and Riggers, Riggers, <laughs> Rivers, uh, you know, not not really looking for it. Rondo finished with 37 fantasy points in 42 minutes, 6.7x. Um, that game was ridiculous. We're not even, we didn't even get to the most ridiculous part of it all yet. You should have just stacked the entire Pelicans team. Well, well all of the Pelicans that played at least. Sorry, guys. Uh, Tyler Johnson, 5.3x. I'd imagine he was barely owned in cash games. And then uh, Rozier, 22 points in 28 minutes, 5.5x. I actually expected a little bit more out of him, especially in 28 minutes. But, you know, he still hit value, and it's hard to complain there. And then Jerry and Grant, if anyone was there, 7.7x, um, 30 fantasy points in 23 minutes. Uh, I didn't really see him getting 23 minutes, which is kind of the big, the big jump. And I don't think anybody was on Thornwell. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you really wanted to either – hit those two uh, lower salary guys, Rondo and Rogier, or, you know, I, I would assume most went to CP3 and were happy. So point guard was relatively okay for cash last night. There weren't too many other cash options that were in play. Um, now, shooting guard, uh, I ultimately ended up on Jeremy Lamb, 70% owned, and uh, the final thing that I fit in was Eric Gordon, 4700 it felt kind of weird that I didn't have 
uh, a part of the Rockets, even though they had the highest implied total. So when he popped up in my last two, it was like, okay, that's I sort of just need to go that direction. I wasn't really a huge fan of it. Um, he put up 29.9 in 35 minutes, good for 6.4x, which I can't really ask for much more at 8% own. That's a gigantic performance. That's not the most important stuff that happened at shooting guard last night. We'll start with Harden. So Harden was 67.7 fantasy points in 34 minutes, 5.7x, a great play, um, relatively low owned. Let's check it out. And it's just because of the way that lineups fit together last night. Yeah, 15% owned. That's that's amazing. To get Harden and Drew, whew, that's a hell of a lineup from that person. Anyway. Um, yeah, big night out of Harden. Uh, I liked DeMar last night. Uh, he was a shooting guard that I would have tried to get onto without all of the crazy news. 39 points in 36 minutes, 4.4x. I mean, it's fine. You wouldn't be too upset. Uh, Lou Williams, not the best night. Tyreek, really bad night. 15.9 in 32 minutes. That Grizzlies team is imploding. Even Gasol's chirping now. Um, and then Clay and CJ both hit 4.1x. Um, you know, that's just, they did exactly what you would expect them to do. Between the two of them, they scored 58.7. I had them projected for 57.6, so right on right on schedule. What you wanted to have was Drew Holiday, because Drew Holiday took that news that uh, AD and Cunningham were out, and he ran with it. 62.3 fantasy points in 41 minutes. I didn't even look at the box score yet. Every Every time I looked back at... The scores, it was just like, oh, Drew Holiday's got 40. Drew Holiday's got 50. What an what a ridiculous game. 78-77 at the half. Drew Holiday, 16 of 21. 37 points. Four steals. And we're not even on their most ridiculous guy on their team yet. <laughs> it's so insane. If you stacked... Well, I guess it probably is the most ridiculous guy on the team... If you stacked these two Pelicans shooting guards, you were almost assuredly going to cash, unless you had Gallo and Draymond as well. But yeah, Drew, 9.2x, huge stud. Um, Smart laid an egg, 17.4 in 31 minutes, 3.1x. He's just not very good at offensive basketball. And it's hard to separate... Liking Marcus Smart, thinking he's good, and thinking he's good in fantasy. That, that's the tricky spot sometimes. Um, you know, there were only four guys that hit value. Well, technically five. Uh, waiters hit it as well, right on the dot, basically. Um, Harden, Drew Holiday, my guy Eric Gordon, 29 and 35 minutes. And Eton Moore, 41 points in 41 minutes, 8.9x. Uh, you know, he popped up for me as like a Eric Gordon alternative. Obviously, they were $100 separate, but there was no way that I was going to go to Eton Moore and go with um, three Pels in that particular case. You know, I was, I did, I, you know, I wished I could have got to Drew Holiday. I just could, there was no way to make that work. But, oh boy, if you would have gotten 100 and 3.4 from those two. Insane, 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 insane. So they were the uh, the plays. You just needed the Pels. The Pels broke the slate a little bit. And then all of the late news didn't exactly help either. Now, Paul George and Durant were my two small forwards. Durant, 68% owned. You know, pretty easy chalk play. And then uh, Paul George, 31% owned. I actually expected that to be a little bit higher. We'll talk about him in a second. I guess he probably would have been a little bit higher had Gallo's news been out from the beginning, but as it wasn't, um, kind of stifled him a bit. Durant put up 51 in 36 minutes, 4.4x. That's perfectly functional. And Paul George, 26 fantasy points, 33 minutes, 3.4x. 
Um, somebody tweeted at me like, well, you know, why did we trust Paul George? I'm not even upset about the way that he played. It was solely a salary play. I wasn't playing him because I thought it was like a good matchup. I wasn't playing him because I thought like he was in line to just blow up. None of that. Um, I played him solely because, well, one, I did think he was going to be a little bit higher owned. I probably like 40%, not 30%. Um, but I played him because his salary dropped by like a thousand plus dollars and he was at 7,800 and like, I, I try to use this as a, uh, as a barometer, but this number right here, this 37.2, um, is a, is a weighted points per minute. So, uh, recency is worth more than, you know, a game in the first day of the season. I just want to see performance for the year to see how that tracks to salary. And it was actually, Paul George's projection was right near, um, my raw projection numbers and with that it makes him look like a really big value because the salary dropped he should have been slightly higher from a salary perspective so i was just betting on paul george's talent like raw talent compared to um sorry wrong screen compared to his salary so you know he didn't play well i'm not super shocked um, I am surprised he only played 33 minutes, but I guess coming back off of the contusion or whatever the hell was wrong with him, you know, that sort of makes sense. But yeah, he was only ever in my lineup because of a salary play. Um, it dropped way more than I would have expected for someone of his talent level. And Jalen Brown, 3.8x, um, you know, ended up not being the Celtic you wanted to have. Um, Ariza was functional. But MKG, 42.8 in 34 minutes, that's the MKG game that you get where you look back, you know, you're, you wonder if you want to take him, and then four days ago you notice that he put up 42.8, and you talk yourself into it, and then he puts up seven. Those, I'm never on MKG on a game where he pops an 8.7. I mean, obviously it's those are rare to begin with, but type of guy that I never get right. Josh Richardson hit value. David Nwaba, who looked pretty good all day. Um, just too much news came out for it to be like something to focus on. He hit value. Uh, big value out of Chandler Parsons, 6.7x. Uh, Evan Turner, 6.3x. Sam Decker, 6.4x. Caspi, Darius Miller, both hit 6.5, 7x. Darius Miller, I didn't realize, played 39 minutes. That's a lot of minutes. Um... Basically, for small forward, you know, you just needed to avoid Gallo. Um, and that was some rough news. Didn't see that coming at all. Shit, that's hot. Oh, that was not, not fun. Now, power forward, I went with the bull stack. Uh, once Markinen was out, that sort of opened up both of those guys. Uh, Miritich was 39.6% owned. Portis was 32% owned. My assumption here is that everybody picked one of the two, and that's why their ownerships are in the 30s. Um, I decided to go with both. Spoiler alert, it was the right decision. Now, uh, I would be remiss to not speak about Draymond getting scratched right after lock. Um, he was... Uh, 30% owned, is that what it was in my double up? Just gotta go to the uh, last page and find the people that had the double goose eggs. This guy probably wakes up and wants to stab somebody. Uh, Draymond was 20% owned in here, Gallo 12% owned. Two zeros. I want to know if anybody had two zeros and had like Eton Moore and Drew Holiday. <sighs> Now they'd be way higher up then. Anyway. If you had Draymond, did you know you got pinched. They happen. It sucks. You know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Although, I was certainly thinking about it and got talked out of it in the chat. I don't know if I would have been able to get there because of knowing how chalky Durant was going to be. But, whew, boy, was I trying. Um, Mello with a stinker, 2.3x. Tatum with a stinker, 3.7x. Olenek with a stinker, 1.8x. Um, Aminu, 2.5x. Atrocious across the board. 
And then you get into James Johnson, 5.2x. <laughs> Abaka, 6x. Shout out, Dark Blue. <laughs> Marvin Williams, 5.6x. Uh, but really, what you wanted to have was the bull stack. They were the two um, highest guys at power forward. Miritich, 36.6 fantasy points in 31 minutes. 8.1x. Mwah. Uh, Ryan Anderson hit value. In seven. Wait, am I reading that right? Nope. David West hit value, 28.9 in 17 minutes. I was going to say, I thought Ryan Anderson like wasn't really playing last night. 6.9x for David West, 69 for Kaminsky, 69 for Harrell. But um, Bobby Portis, 32.3 fantasy points in 23 minutes, 8.5x. Nailed the two 8x dudes at power forward last night. Used my noodle. Happy about it. Jordan Bell, 25 points in 25 minutes, 6.6x. Uh, no, there's no way anybody was on that. Um, the same for Von Ley, 19 points in 15 minutes. Just You needed to be on, or wanted to be on Miritich and uh, Portis. A um, lot of bombs at power forward. You were either hitting value or missing it by miles. Look at all those black dots. Ugh, that's just terrible. It's either 5x or 2x. And then finally we get to center. Um, with the AD news, I pivoted off of Marc Gasol and went to Boogie. 47% owned, so I'm not the only one that thought about that. He put up 51.8 in 33 minutes, 4.3x. I'm happy that that happened because I got off of Marc Gasol. He put up 25 points in 34 minutes, and I think we're at a a situation where we really need to consider ignoring the Grizzlies. Um, Tyreek played like garbage. Uh, Gasol laid a big egg, and they're just a team in disarray right now. Um, it wouldn't shock me to see Marc Gasol get like shut down in January or February or something. I would imagine Conley's in no rush to get back. I'll tell you what, though. Conley could come back, and they can make a run and make the playoffs, and it wouldn't even shock me. The damn Grizzlies are so resilient. DeAndre Jordan, finally with a big game, 47 in 32 minutes, 6.2x. Uh, Horford a bit of a stinker. There's the Capella game that I always think that I'm going to get but never get, 51.6 in 23 minutes. That's the Capella game I thought I was getting Saturday and didn't get. I, I don't understand him. Like, I just, uh, it's crazy. It's one of those games, well, you know, you see Harden get, what, 14 assists or something? I'd love to know how many of them were to Capella. Um, you know, I was never really looking at Adams. I did look at Rolo, which 12.8 in 24 minutes is kind of shocking. Um, but it was basically just because Portis and Miritich couldn't miss. And then, uh, if you had the guts and went to Bam, he put up 33.8 in 22 minutes. Uh, 8.5x, which is giant. Jonas with 41 uh, fantasy points in 27 minutes, 8.7x, giant. Uh, Zach Collins got a lot of burn, 25 minutes, um, 7.2x. But most of the people that you were going to be on were from Rolo up. And, uh, you know, no out-and-out disasters aside from Rolo. Um, and, like, 50% of the people were on Cousins. But big ups to the people that were able to grab DeAndre or, uh, or Capella. So, yeah, I ended up at 305.9. Um... Being able to hit on Gordon was big, and then hitting on the two-headed monster from the Bulls was giant. Uh, I was nervous that not having Drew was going to be a problem, but I think all of those uh, missing guys were able to bail me out. Um, you know, I'm happy with my lineup. One in the basically 3,500 is nuts. I, I hit basically every piece of chalk that I needed to hit. It would have just been nice if I turned Gordon into Eton Moore, but I'm not really in any position to complain about Gordon's performance. He got me 6.4x, and that is more than enough for me. So I showed it before, but let's head back to it again. Um, we are now in the positive for this little exercise, which is fun. It's exciting. That's, that's the grind right now. You know, 2.9% isn't going to be horrible, if we have 
you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of entry fees by the end of the season. So let's just hope it grows, uh, and let's hope we we keep the winning ways going. Um, I'm going to do a breakdown video for tonight's slate. Uh, there will not be a live before lock tonight. I've got uh, some holiday plans with the wife, so uh, we won't be going live tonight. We'll be back on the live train for Wednesday. Let's see how many games we have on Wednesday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, nine games late on Wednesday. We'll be back for a live before lock there. As normal, um, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, check out my Patreon. Uh, website is slowly but surely being updated. That is where the projections are going to be housed now. Um, let me know if you have any issues with the site, if, it's, if it looks okay, if you have any suggestions or thoughts. Um, still working on a Excel book so that you guys can sort of see what I see when I'm when I'm putting my stuff together. Um, thanks to everybody from the live stream last night. Thanks to everybody that uh, got into the super chat, which was ugh, shocking by the end of it all. It was so much fun. Um, so thanks to everybody. That's the end of this recap, and uh, I'll be back with the breakdown for Tuesday slate. Bye bye.